All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So today's video, I'm gonna be installing a set of Sumo springs on the rear of my ProMaster 2500. So the reason I'm doing this, just completed our van build. All right. So obviously it added a lot of weight to the ProMaster. The rake on it is still good. It's not like it's squatting really bad in the back or anything, but you can definitely feel the difference when you're driving it feels a little more top heavy and a little more unstable on the road all right so previously on one of my old trucks my f-250 i had a truck camper and i installed a set of the competitors product the timbrin uh you know shock absorbers they basically do the same thing look a little bit different and i went with them because the sumo springs were made wrong and didn't fit right but Looks like they've got all that squared away. This is a whole, obviously a whole different product. There's a lot of good feedback out there on the Sumo Springs on the ProMaster. So here's what you get in the box. Set of the springs. And depending on the ride height, you can take one of these spacers off and use the different bolts that come in there. But I'm gonna install it with both of them, I believe. The first step is to remove the factory jounce bumpers. So these factory jump bumpers, as you can see in the shot here, they look like there's no way to get them off if you've ever done them on a truck before, but they actually spin on and off. Uh, there's a bolt in them. So I'm gonna kind of show you the easiest way to go about this. Now this is assuming uh, you don't have a rusty mess up in there, but these ProMasters really don't rust. It's not usually a problem. So I found the best way to get it started is to take a hammer and a screwdriver and just kind of tap it. I hope you see it moving a little bit there. Once you get it broke free, you can spray a little WD-40 in there if you want. Um, they're still gonna be kind of hard to turn by hand. I have this oil filter wrench here. And if I put that on there, you can see it has some grip. Because if you try to turn it by the rubber, you might just tear the rubber right off. So it's gonna be a pain all the way off. I'm gonna get my workout today. Might be able to get my hand now. See, so it's just threaded, and you can see the little bit of WD-40, which basically did nothing since we're working the opposite direction. But everything looks in good shape. There's no rust. Nothing's boogered up. So you can see, this is why we have to jack it up a little bit. Can't even get it in there. I'm just going to take a bottle jack, and that way it goes up evenly and try to turn this thing up Just want to make sure it's going to thread in there. All right, so once you make sure it will thread in, take it back out and 
They include the blue Loctite in the kit. This is pretty much all there is to it. I'm just gonna get it on here. Alright, so that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm just kind of snug this down just a hair with these. That's kind of with the blue Loctite when that dries. That'll kind of just keep this thing from coming loose, but it's, it's not going to come loose because it's going to be sitting on a spring full time. But you don't want any kind of sideways motion in it. See? it's on there and we are done with this side and now we're going to do the exact same thing on the driver's side all right so here we are on the driver's side it's a little tougher because of the exhaust um, if you spray a little bit of WD-40 up into this hole it gets the top part where it could be rusted and I literally just started turning this one by hand of course it can get a little difficult there so let that WD-40 work in a little bit. Got a little excited on this side thought it was gonna be smooth sailing wrong so was working it out and the bolt or the nut snapped off of the frame inside and then this thing just started spinning freely so I had to cut it now if you look and see the nut and the rest of the bolt head is just sitting in there so it's all handy to get it out now the problem is now we have nothing to thread into i gotta figure out if i can even get to this to get this old one out pushed out of there and then i'll have to get some kind of nut behind here and that was captured from the factory i don't know if it was welded or how they got that on there so i'm gonna have to come up with something Alright, so why it really stinks that this happened, I guess it's good for the YouTube audience to see what could happen and how I'm going to fix it. So you can see there's these three weld points right here that snapped off. They're just tack welded to that little frame piece. And it's because there was enough corrosion on here that once it got to a certain point, it was just putting too much torque on it and it just snap that off even though I put a bunch of you can see the TV blaster WD-40 that was on there all right so this uses a really weird metric size well I guess it's not really weird but it's M10-1.25 I just went to a hardware store got a couple different options so this is a like a flange nut that is that size so you can see it kind of spins down against the frame there's another one which is a little bit closer to like the size of the factory nut as far as the bulk you can see it's pretty it's got some some heft to it i mean it is kind of 
holding an important spot. But so we got a couple of options. I have a couple of options um, to fix this. I don't think what I first thought about is if I could just get this like this and get it up in there uh, and just kind of hold that in place, then maybe I could just spin it up. I don't know if that's going to work or not just because I don't think there's enough room for the head of the, of the wrench to get in there. So lucky for us, I mean, they did make it so you could, I was able to eat, reach in there with a screwdriver and just knock it out the other side, the frame rail. But yeah, like I said, this is not going to, that's not going to fit. So what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to take a piece of this flat bar steel here. And I'm actually going to tack weld it to the end of the nut. Then I can just kind of slide the nut in here. And this will keep it from spinning also. Then I can thread it up in there. And it's unfortunate, obviously, if you don't have access to a welder or a way to tack weld this, the situation might be a little bit worse. You honestly might be able to... I mean, I can almost... I can basically get my finger over the hole. So I think if you had someone kind of hold the nut from both sides, you could get it started at least, but the problem is gonna be, once you get it tightened down to a certain point, there's not you're not gonna be able to hold that with your fingers anymore. So I think that would be the only problem with doing it that way. So I think I'm gonna do it this way, but you know, just to give you an idea of what could happen. I've seen situations that are may way worse than this, as far as, you know, breaks off up inside of the frame you have to cut a hole inside of the frame of the car luckily we don't have that situation here so this isn't really that big of a deal it's just going to take a little more work than it should have been all right so real quick just put a couple tacks told that put a little coat of some anti-rust paint on the steel it should slide up in there pretty easy all right, so I got this side jacked up off of there. Just my little contraption. And of course it's not gonna be able to rotate freely in there. Alright, so get down there nice and snug. Go get my pliers, torque it down one little bit, then we'll lower this down. Alright, so it did raise the height just to a little bit in the back on both sides. Not sure if it'll stay that way. Now I'm gonna take it for a little drive and see if I notice a difference in the ride. All right, so not much of a better place to test it than this gravel road here. And it feels good. I'd say the initial impression is it's a little more harsh, but not necessarily in a bad way. It just has a more planted feel. So you're gonna feel the bumps in the rear a little bit more, which obviously makes sense. There's not gonna be as much bounce. So it's very uh, steady going down the road. Get on pavement and see how it kinda goes a little bit higher speeds. That's where I was noticing it was just a little bit of more sway like with the wind and stuff. All right, so it's good. I don't know what else to say. It feels really good, actually really am pleased with the outcome it does feel much more responsive to the road uh, it feels much more planted on the road kind of in these curves here I don't feel like I'm gonna like fall over and fall off the side of the road it's quite as bad as I did before so that is a good thing all right, so hopefully the video was helpful. Again, the little problem we had actually maybe will help somebody else. 
case it happens to you. I uh, can't be the only one. All the other videos on YouTube, everything's great. But we all know it's not always reality. So be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll have a link in the description to the parts I use in the video, as always. And until next time, we'll see you later.